So today, guys, we're gonna explore the DN app, which is just the depth aware interpolation thingy. <laughs> I forgot the N again. I should have known this acronym, okay? So they they have like two versions, right? Uh, the Rife app, which are which is the successor of the DN app. It is much much more good interface, much more better interface, and we have the DN app, which is actually the free version. The free version is actually good if you want to use it just for your interpolating, which means uh, making your art more smoother. So we're gonna experiment on this on the GIF side, on the GIF side of the things, right? So what does it mean when you're interpolating some GIFs? So here's an example of it. As you can see, it's much more smoother. You can see that. The transitions of it is much more smoother. I see on this side also. You can see that the arms are much more smoother. Just, just a bit more jagged on it. And this also. You can see the movements of Sub-Zero there. It is essentially just putting more in between frames on the existing frames to make the animation more smoother. And using it in an automated kind of way using NVIDIA's CUDA, okay? So this only works for NVIDIA. So if you're, uh, if you're right, <laughs> if you're like having Radeon stuff, you can't use this one. So you have to download this first. So first thing we have to do is set it up. You have to download it. You just go to the, the GitHub here. And then, oh, not that link, this link, GitHub release link. And just click here, the 1.5 gig. Just download that. And the other one you have to download also is the CUDA toolkit. Here, I will provide all the links in the description down below. You choose your operating system here. Yeah, yeah, it would be like Windows and the uh, architecture is X like that. And then it's EXE and then just download it. It's 2 gigs. So overall, you are loading like 3.7 3. gigs. Or just roughly four gigs of uh, things and stuff. Okay, so we're gonna test this in a few gifs and see what it looks like. So here is the interface of the Diana app, Diana, 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 whatever. Um, so let's explore it a bit, and I'm just gonna put you to the process of how to make a interpolated thing. So it'll make your animation animated GIF smoother. Enough time. The scenario of this, if you don't have enough time, you can just put it on the DN app and it will just make the animation smoother, right? So this is the animated GIF and the client wants to like, hey, Tojo, can you just make it a little bit smoother? It, it, it feels a little bit jagged. So I'm a lazy kind of guy. So I'm just gonna pop out my DN app like this one and then just input the file there and let's see how it looks like so we have i forgot the file name of it is it final redact fee yeah. there we go we have input the file i've inputted it as an input video and then we'll export it as mp4 okay and then the output file of it is output folder of it is just in the on the desktop I select it and interpolation options would be like 2x, 4x, 8x. I'm gonna export them all 2x, 4x, 8x to to get to for you to get the example of it. And then what else? We want to make it a cartoon or anime because if we're gonna make it a real life 3D thing, it will destroy the background. It will like uh, create a focus on the background and it will. Like, um, what do you call this? It will distort your background to have a clear depth perception of the application. A clear depth render. Yeah. So the depth recognition of this is turned off right now. And then next is we're going to go to the MISC. We're going to do perfect loop animation. Or you can choose not to do this. I often opt not to do this, actually. And also in the pixel pixel art department of it, the text in the, in the picture, picture art tab, you need to limit the palette so that there are no more funky colors that that that, that the Diane app would uh, create, okay? And then after that, you'll just have to perform all renders. So if you click on this one, be sure to, number one, 
not do anything. Okay. So if you're streaming on OBS, if you're gaming, if you're if you're rendering, if your graphics card is shit like mine, so just close them all. <laughs> just close them all, okay? And a reminder: if you don't have the the CUDA toolkit, this will this won't work. So you would have to tap on this. So if I tap on this, my OBS will explode. The literally explode. The <laughs> the the rendering would the video capture would stop because of my shitty graphics card, okay? So after that, here are the results. So here now we're gonna compare all of them, the interpolated stuff. So on the farthest left is the original that I drew, and then the middle on the second one, going to the right, left to the right, is the X2 version of it. It's about like uh, 19 FPS, and going to the next part is the 39 FPS one, this one, and then the last part is the about uh what you how many fps is this one uh 78 fps as you can see going more the more fps it has the more it's like smoother but it's go it's going to be like slow motion the 78 the x 78 fps is like very very slow you can see that it's smooth but it's very slow and here on the 39 pixels version uh, 39 fps version of it it's a little bit more fluid but i can see that the blurs are just too much for me still too much for me and then on the other one the 19 fps one it's a little bit okay but still the blurs are too much for this animation so what i recommend is do an edits for the 19 fps one so if you have a gif you can just have it like X2 and then edit in the Photoshop. Uh, I'll see you what do you mean. Uh, I'll, I'll just uh, let you see what I mean here. So here is an example of it, how to edit it. So let's just uh, go to the videos again. Let's just use the 19 FPS thing and let's open it to Photoshop. So what it looks like is this. You now have two X of your frames and it's like 16. I have 16 there, now it is like 32. So it creates the in between. So these are the original frames, and this is the in between of it. You can see it clearly, actually. You can see the blur. And the next is the original, the interpolated, the original, the interpolated, the original, the interpolated. You can see this is the interpolated. How do I know? Because the, the, this is already in between frames, and I can see the blur there. Then the the original, the interpolated again, the original, interpolated again, so on and so forth. Like that. So what you need to do here is to remove the blurs. So for this animation, I remove all the blurs here. I they did it like preemptively before starting this video, not to bore you. As you can see here on the these sides, like this one, this is very creepy. Like you don't want those things. Like blurring like that. And that thing also, you don't want that in your animation like that. Because if you, if someone just stops the animation on that frame, it will look, I don't know. It's, a, it's okay. It's okay for it to be playing constantly. But just seeing it, if you say stop in there, it just gi gives you a different feeling of the animation. Just like It's like, it's just generated or something. So you need to have to refine this. So how do you refine it is just go to the frame after you go to the frame and just paint it over. Paint it like that. So that it will look sharper. This thing. And this. Go to that layer and just paint it there. Like that. Like that. So some frames, it did pretty well actually. Like this one. So it's just small edits. And this one also, it did pretty well. Like that is a good in between there. But some frames are just, they're just ugly, bro. It's actually ugly. And this is just, it is just creates you for you a starting point to for you to refine your frames again. So if you don't want to create new frames, if you want to draw new frames, so you 
use this application after you use this application and draw over it. So here's the final version of it. So the final version of these animation is taken from with the help of the 19 FPS one. And I've just so the in-betweens of this one is much more smoother and as you can see the breadcrumbs here are like moving uh the say moving like uh, more naturally than the other one here than the than on the first one than the original one so you can see also on the interpolated one the eyes are not aligned correctly that is like my bad there because of the original versions the eyes are just everywhere and now i've just aligned it a bit so that is more perception you can perceive it much better and the more that you edit edit it like it doesn't have any blurs the more it will look beautiful essentially if you want to have a frame by frame animation you would like to avoid avoid blurs on it because you will have a frame bad if the user pause on it and think about it why, why is this thing blurring so it's much more it's much better in animation to have good lines rather than blurs because on frame by frame animations your your mind actually creates the blurs for you. You cannot actually like see any blurs on it, but it feels like having blur, having a blur on the tail when it's moving because it's so fast. So it, you don't need to create blurs on that on those kinds of animation. So and also if if you want if you want to create blur on animation, it's just uh, for for a person like me or other people that. It just it's more of a creates a sick feeling like uh, motion sickness kind kinds of stuff because it's so it's so fast that it's so snappy in a sense and yeah the blur like creates a motion sickness feeling for other people very very un uncomfortable to watch yep so at least you'll see now how would this work on a real life scenario like. Why would I use this on a client work? Probably yes, if I don't have any experience of in betweening frames. But uh, no, <laughs> I won't actually use this on a client animation because it is it is more work to be done rather than on the other on the other stuffs like the frames. The um, let me just uh, say this on the other stuffs like expanding the cheeks and here. It is, does well moving the whiskers. It does well, but you can see in the on the renderings on the editings that I did in Photoshop that the mouths are just horrible. The eyes are just plain horrible. You can use this as a baseline, but if you're working with Illustrator, then a vectors. If you're working on Illustrator and Photoshop, you can just edit and on the Illustra Illustrator file on the on the spot and just move some stuff there after you move some stuff there you can, you can just save it again rather than go directly to photoshop and edit some pixels on there so i think that's it uh would i recommend this one um no i won't recommend this one if you want a smooth work on your animation but if you need something some help in in betweening stuffs this application is helpful for you to identify what in the in betweens should be should be put on those two frames. Yeah, it it could be helpful if you're a beginner, but if you're not, and you can just create an a good in between, mm, I would definitely skip this one. <laughs> so that's it. I uh, hope you have enjoyed this kind of tutorial. I'm not dunking on the app, <laughs> but it is it is a way it has more ways to go, and for an app that. This this is this what you call this compact and uh, compact and easy to use and free. It does a decent job in refining animations, but I won't recommend it in your client work. <laughs> so see you soon, guys, and I hope you this video has been informative and stay safe and have a good one.